When we last visited this field of dandelions a couple of weeks ago, the field was ablaze with flowers of gold. Incomparable and unique is how D. H. Lawrence described it. Foolish to compare it to anything else on earth. But how different it looks today. Most of the flowers have now gone to seed and the whole field is enveloped in a white mist. When we look at a field of dandelions, we really see only two things. We see the open flowers and we see the globular heads of seeds, all precisely arranged on their pin cushion base in such a way that they don't get in each other's way. And there's a fascinating detail here that we might easily miss. When you look at the flowers, the little florets develop sequentially from the outside in. In other words, they begin their development at different times and the seeds begin to develop at different times. But in the seed head, they synchronize the development of the seeds so that by the time they reach this stage all the seeds have reached maturity. But there's something of a puzzle here because there's an interval of between 9 and 15 days from the flower to the seed head. So where have the seed heads disappeared to in the two weeks or so in between? We'll find the answer to that question if we look a little more closely. As soon as flowering is over, the head closes over. The stalk bends at the base to lower the developing seed heads into the grass where it is safer from grazing and mowing. But notice the delicate way that it keeps the head more or less erect. And then, when the seeds are ripe, it straightens up and elongates so that the seed head is at a higher level than the flowers were, which is important in order to elevate the seeds to a height from which they can launch themselves into the air and be carried away instead of getting tangled up in surrounding vegetation before they are airborne. Notice the way the bracts, these leafy structures here, uh, the way they retract so as not to get in the way of seed launch. And then when its work is done, the flower stem stays in that position. But perhaps the feature that is most marvellous is the fruit itself with its parachute, the pappus, to give it its proper name. The pappus is a marvel of design, its intricate complexity only discovered in recent years. So with all that in place, you might think that now it's simply a matter of the wind coming along and blowing the seeds away. But it's actually much more sophisticated than that. For a start, the pappus is not a parachute. If anything, it's an inverted parachute, which you would think would make it much less efficient. And secondly, although the material of the pappus is super lightweight, the wide gaps between the filaments, and there are about a hundred filaments, uh, you would think that that would make it much less efficient as well. But what you may not realize is that around each of the filaments uh, there is a, a thick layer of still air. And the interaction of these layers of still air greatly decreases the rate of flow of the air through the pappus, uh, minimizing its rate of fall. The initial motion of dandelion seeds is brief but fast and is rapidly stabilized into an equilibrium orientation that minimizes the seed's terminal velocity, allowing it to make maximum use of updrafts. The real magic, though, is how this happens. As the seed begins to fall after its initial windy launch and just before it reaches its terminal fall velocity, the precise balance between the different features of pappus structure, the super light material it's made of, the optimal number of filaments, the precisely controlled flow of air between the filaments, 
and the exact weight of the seed passenger below, the interaction between these factors triggers the formation of what is called a separated vortex ring in the air immediately above the seed, above the hollow bowl of the filaments of the pappus. And this lifts the seed, slowing its rate of fall and increasing the chances of aerial transport to a distance. Here are some images of what that looks like, taken in an experimental wind tunnel. You won't be too surprised to learn that the design of the dandelion pappus has attracted the attention of biometric engineers interested in the design of miniature drones and parachutes. So you can understand a little bit better, perhaps, what D. H. Lawrence meant by incomparable and unique, even though he had never heard of the separated vortex ring.